Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to share with you my top 20 tips and tricks to get the most from your Disneyland Paris holiday. We usually go every year and during that time I've picked up a couple of tricks that help our money go further and ensure we have the best possible holiday. Tip number one is to go prepared. Before you travel check out the Disneyland Paris website and see what time the park is open and if any of the rides are closed for refurbishment. If you're planning on eating at the park, you can now make restaurant reservations before you get there. And this will help you to eat when you want, where you want. If you want to have your photos taken with the characters, you can now use the Line Bertie app to book yourself a space later in the day. But this is only available once you're in the park. As the park has Wi-Fi, if you download the app, you can check out the ride queue times. So if you see that Brig Thunder Mountain has a queue time of only five minutes, it's a good idea to head over there while it's quiet. Pre-planning everything does spoil some of the spontaneity, but it'll also give you a much smoother holiday. Tip number two, wear comfortable shoes. You'd be surprised at how many miles you can rack up just walking around the park from ride to ride. And although those heels may look great with that outfit, you'll soon know it by lunchtime once you've got huge blisters and you're having to hobble around the park. Another good idea is to pack blister plasters just in case you need them. If you're travelling with children and you're unsure as to whether to take a buggy or stroller, I suggest taking one to be on the safe side. Although you can hire them in the park, they are quite expensive. And trust me, you don't want to be stood watching the fireworks while your four-year-old naps on your shoulder. If you take it and don't use it, you can always leave it in the room. While we're on the subject of buggies, let's go over to tip number three. Buy some bright fluorescent tape and tape up the handles and framework. This will help you to spot your buggy in the buggy parking areas. Nowadays, everyone uses balloons, so your buggy won't stand out amongst the sea of floating Mickey heads. But hopefully there won't be many buggies there with bright green or loomy orange handles. Tip number four, light up your kids. Before you go, get yourself some glow-in-the-dark bracelets or necklaces, the ones that you snap to activate. They're not that expensive and it'll help you keep an eye on your little one in the dark. Not only will you be able to see them during the fireworks, but when the hundreds of thousands of people pile out of the park, it also makes them visible to other people, so they're less likely to get trampled on by a stranger. Tip number five, arrange a meeting point in case anybody gets lost. I know that nowadays everyone has a mobile phone, but that's no good to you if your battery's dead from having your child watch their favourite film on your phone while they've been waiting in the queue. I suggest in front of the castle, in Magic Kingdom, or by the Walt and Mickey statue in the Disney Studio Park. If you have young children, Remind them to seek out a member of staff if they get lost. And instead of using the free stickers that the park provide, I brought some hospital bands from eBay for about £10 for a box of 100. And I write my contact details on them. They last ages and I've still got a box from when James was little that we now use for Jess. These are good because they're less likely to fall off. And if you attach it to their coat or jacket, it may even last the whole holiday. And don't forget to take a photo of your child on your phone every morning. So if worst case scenario and you do lose them, you've got a good clear picture to pass around the staff of what they're wearing and what they look like. Tip number six is to stay at a Disney hotel. Not only do you get magic hours, free Disney transport, but if you stay in the budget hotels like Santa Fe and Cheyenne, they're still cheaper than some of the partner hotels further out. And if you're buying souvenirs in the park, you can always have them sent back to your hotel and collect them at the end of the day. Tip number seven is to go on the more popular rides during the parades or late in the evening when they're generally quieter. During the day, queues for Big Thunder Mountain can easily be well over an hour long. And we found if you get there about half an hour before the park closes, it's often about five minute queue time or even walk on. And it's also great fun to do in the dark. Tip number eight is to get your child some ear defenders. It took a little while for Jess to get used to hers, but they were great for noisy crowds during the fireworks or for some of the louder shows. And if your child does have a nap, it makes it a little bit quieter so they can get to sleep easier. Tip number nine is to download some games or films onto your phone or tablet so that your child has something to keep them amused while they wait. You're going to spend a lot of time queuing, whether it's for the rides or waiting for shows and parades to start. And if you can keep your little ones occupied, it might just make those queues bearable. And don't forget to take something non-electronic, like a small pack of cards, just in case your battery dies. Tip number 10 is to layer up on clothing. You'd be surprised how cold it can get in the evenings, even in summer, when you've been stood around for a while waiting for the fireworks or in some of the external queues. Once you stop moving around, 
it can get quite nippy and you'll be grateful for that cardigan tucked in the bottom of your bag or underneath the buggy. Tip number 11 is to get your snacks and drinks from either the SO garage next to Santa Fe Hotel or from the train station. Drinks and snacks in the park are very expensive and you can save some money by buying them outside the park. You can also do what we do and take these one shot juices with you and ask for a jug of table water with your meal or fill up your water bottles from the fountains dotted around the park. Tip number 12 is to buy costumes before you go and take them with you. It's very common to see little girls dressed as princesses and those dresses can set you back 70 or 80 euros in the park and they grow out of them so quickly. I brought my children's ones from eBay second hand. They were not only cheaper but we were also reusing them so saving the planet a little. And it's not just the kids who like to dress up. You'll be surprised at how many adults you'll see wearing Disney merchandise. And again, they're much cheaper to buy before you go. And if you're in a big group, you can get them specially printed so that you can all be spotted in a crowd. Tip number 13 is to allow yourself a set amount of time each day for shopping. It's Disney and most rides exit through a gift shop. And if you're not careful, you can easily spend half an hour to an hour just wandering around looking at gifts. So if you see something you like, make a note of it and go back and get it either after lunch or at the end of the day. And if you're staying at a Disney hotel, don't forget to get it sent back there so that you don't have to cart it around with you all day. Tip number 14 is to take with you some small snack bags or snack pots. You can fill these up with either dry cereal, small cubes of cheese or grapes from the lunchtime buffet. And this just helps to fill up little tummies or big tummies while you're waiting for your next meal. And may just save you from having to buy an overpriced hot dog. Tip number 15 is to split the day. If you're visiting over the summer, the park opens early in the morning and shuts late at night. If you're traveling with little ones, I suggest if you're going to have an early morning, maybe try and plan to have an early finish. Or if you want to stay and see the fireworks, try and have a lie in and get to the park slightly later. Or if you're staying nearby, go back to the hotel for a quick nap. Otherwise those long hours will soon catch up with you. Tip number 16 is to buy the meal deals in the UK if you're staying at a Disney hotel. We saved on average 30 euros per person per day by buying our meal deal as part of our package instead of paying for our meals once we got to the park. Even if you're planning to eat at the quick service restaurants, you can still save yourself 20 euros by buying your meals when you book. And don't forget to take your children's cutlery with you as none of the restaurants we went to had the small size cutlery and Jess would have struggled with a full size knife and fork. Tip number 17 is to use the Disney Express service. It is expensive just for them to look after your luggage for you for a few hours, but it means you can have your luggage delivered to your hotel and pick it up at the end of the day. And on departure day, you can take it to the luggage room in the morning and Disney will take it to the train station for you so you can go off and enjoy your day and you don't have to trek backwards and forwards with all your bags and cases. Tip number 18 is to check the price of a Eurostar upgrade. Depending on when you're traveling and how far in advance you book, you may find upgrading from economy to premium economy is only 10 or 20 pounds more. We usually save our upgrade for the return journey as you get more room and a light meal. And it's always nice to finish off your holiday with a little luxury. And if you want to save even more money, you might want to book your Disney holiday and your Eurostar tickets separately. We've often found you get the best deals the earlier you book, but the Eurostar seats may not be bookable at that time. So we book our accommodation without transport and then keep an eye on the Eurostar website every few weeks and book our tickets direct. Those seats often go on sale to the general public before they become available through Disney and you can pick your preferred seat. Tip number 19 is if a member of your family has a special need, like not being able to stand in queues for long periods, always take a GP's letter with you. A broken leg may seem obvious to you and me, but you'd be surprised how difficult it is to get a disability pass once you're in the park, if you don't have proof of medical need. And last but not least, tip number 20. Buy your child a toy before you go and take it with you. You can hide it in the bottom of your suitcase and leave it on the bed for them to find as a gift from Mickey or Minnie. And hopefully that might stop them from asking for toys in the park and save you some money. I hope you found these tips and tricks useful. If you can think of anything that I've missed, please leave a comment in the section below to help others out. If you're going to Disneyland Paris, I wish you a bon voyage and I hope you have a magical time. 
Don't forget to subscribe to my channel to see more helpful videos like this and we'll see you again soon. Au revoir.